episode two of the Ethan Lowe podcast. Here we have ten years at this point. We've been best friends for, you know, almost as long as I can remember. Childhood best friend. Childhood best friend. We actually met each other through a homeschool co-op many years ago. You know, started off, you know, just playing Minecraft, being freaking spedge, and now, you know, we're up here, you know, oh, we're, yeah. we're chilling, we're making podcasts, we're going to the gym, you know, we're high quality men now, so. I agree. So, uh, what have you been up to nowadays? What's Andrew Tate up to now? Like, well, what's, what, what have you been up to, bro? I'll tell you what, you know, I've been, uh, I've been working hard, you know, I've been, I've been trying, <laughs> 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 oh man, sorry, just, anyway, I, you know, I've been, I've been trying to become the the man I've always wanted to be right you know, half of my father you know that's right ah uh, man you know I've been working more on my craft uh, woodworking that's right I've been going to the gym I've been reading I've been doing good in school you know what I'm saying this is good trying to talk to women uh, but stay mysterious that's right you know I think we're both well on our way to becoming superior men definitely I agree right. and uh and so uh yeah today we actually uh we had Compline with our priest today, and uh, we actually got a, we kind of just got a, so we sang part, like we sang some stuff and we read some verses, but then we actually got to do some chanting, and so uh, how was your experience chanting today, Andrew? It was uplifting, I would say. It was very spiritual. I felt like it, w- it was very masculine. It, w- it was even though you're chanting like, you know, up here on, on the scale, you know, kind of almost a female voice, but not right. quite. It was just, you know, that was something from, you know, thousands of years ago that they created and we're still using it today. Right, and even though it's something that people could probably consider more feminine, you know, like, I really enjoyed it and I, I felt the deep masculine sense Definitely. behind it. I agree, I agree. See, that's the thing is, you know, even though, you know, you're singing way up here, you know, and you're monotone and singing everything. Singing this weird acapella kind of strange voice yeah. in a church and then you eventually you know mess up and then you start laughing but uh here's the thing <laughs> even though you're you know singing way up here it's still really enjoyable especially when you're with your brothers and even though there's some old geriatrics there on their way to the nursing home um i definitely enjoyed it a lot um I think you can say the same thing, and, uh, oh, our German friend. Yes, uh, I kind of talked about our German friend a little bit on the last podcast, oh, I think. Really? But, uh, basically, uh, he actually came here yesterday. I met him for the first time yesterday. And, uh, I drove to the airport, and I saw him at the airport. And, uh, so we picked him up, he came in, you know, I gave him a hug. And, uh, you know, that night I actually got to eat a burger with him. You know, we got to talk about some stuff. You know, we played a game, uh, Poetry for Neanderthals, if you played the game before. It's a really fun game. But I think I got a chance to connect with him on a deeper level today, as did Andrew. Andrew actually met him for the first time today. Oh, definitely. I got to take him to Walmart, and uh, he got to see Walmart for the first time. And it was, I thought it was really cool just to kind of see, like, a lot of things from America he, had, there, he didn't see in Germany very much. Like, he... He specified how big Walmart was compared to most German uh, supermarkets. He said it was like huge in comparison, like Definitely. it was way bigger. And he actually said that Mountain Dew is like readily unavailable. So he's like, Mountain Dew! You know, said. Well, you know what's interesting about Mountain Dew, if you don't mind me getting to a kind of a controversial topic? Of course, of course. Mountain Dew has a lot of, you know, supposedly, uh, see, well, okay. So the EU, the European Union, which I believe Germany is a part of, um, <laughs> bans, uh, I think, 10,000 or more food preservatives and additives than the U.S. does. Wow. So they definitely limit um, their what you can put in food because a lot of it, believe it or not, Mountain Dew is awful for you. Um, of course. It takes years off your life every time you drink one. This is all so. soda. All soda is horrible. All soda Don't is drink horrible. it, Kings. Don't You're drink. a high value man. Yes. You won't freaking drink soda. But uh, that's the thing is the Europe is a lot more mindful of what they put in their food, whereas America is just kind of like pump it to the public. They'll drink it. They don't really care about their health. Kind of suck it from the governmental. Yeah. They're just like I'm work nine to five until the day you die. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You know, work till you drop, crop till you drop, ranch till you can't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You keep you keep going. That's you something know? I think that's interesting from the nine to five perspective. Those people work harder than most millionaires. But the thing is, the millionaires, 
they understand that there's no value in the nine to five job. That was the meta back in the 1950s, 1960s, but now it's online businesses. And that's the way to make money nowadays. Just have one billion dollar idea and you'll be good for the rest of your life. You can make any person, if they devote their life to it, they could be making a million dollars anywhere between 10, from five to 10 years, you could have a million dollars in your bank. You just have to commit to it. I agree. And you can't be a freaking little girl about it. I agree. And that's what you know we're doing right now. I we're starting early. Something to add to that, if you don't mind. Of course. Here, here's the thing: not everybody can make it out. Not everybody can, you know, make ten million dollars in a year. And plus, not everybody can do that anyway. And a lot of it is based on luck. But a lot of it is based on hard work. That's the thing: branding your product. Um, using your product yourself, um, becoming familiar with your audience, and targeting their specific, uh, you know, routes that they use, you know what I'm saying? Um, but anyways, off of that, the point of it is, I think as the other Andrew Tate put it, um, someone's got to flip the burgers, dumbass. Uh, Somebody does have to flip the burgers. Which is really sad, because not everybody can live in a $10 million mansion, because... You still have to have the American workforce, blue-collar workers, even white-collar workers that are working nine to five, punching numbers, in a you know a tall city. You know, that's the thing is not everybody can make it out, and that's really depressing. Um, that's what they're trying to do with AI is um, take jobs away from these people. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I don't know where that came from. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. Go ahead. No, also. also um yeah, I just kind of, you know, what the goal of this podcast is, just, you know, go on a rabbit hole conversation, you know. I, I try to leave, the, you know, the more specific stuff up to my other videos. And so I try to leave the podcast for time to just, you know, yeah. take it where we want to go with it. And so, Andrew, I understand that you're a student pilot, as am I, but I understand that you have more experience in that field than I do. So, well, what's your main interest in aviation? What's, what got you into the craft? Well, last year, actually, I, uh, 2022 more specifically July of that year, um, I attended a, the Northern Oklahoma Flight Academy. Now, um, there was a, you know, youngsters class where you build model rockets and you learn about airplanes and you might go up for a plane ride. This was the more advanced class where you get about four hours of actual flight time and instruction plus ground school. Now, the thing is, from this, uh, the first time I stepped foot in an airplane, um, a smaller airplane, Cessna 172, slightly modified. It was really, uh, it was really, really fun, and I enjoyed it a lot. Even the pre-flight, everything leading up to it. And I think it's all thanks to my first instructor, um, Mr. McMath out of Skytook, I believe. He was really good. He was very good. Um, he let you fly the plane. He made you feel comfortable in there. He didn't pressure you too much. But you still got that kind of nerve, you know what I'm saying? Mr. McMath, incredible guy. Incredible. I actually got to meet him in the, the last Oklahoma Flight Academy. I actually got to attend and I got some more hours out of it. And uh, it was interesting because he's the second uh, f actual flight instructor that I've gotten to spend an extended amount of time with. And he had a very interesting style of teaching compared to a being, you know, uh, you know, lickety split, do exactly what I tell you, everything by the books. He really let you fly the airplane. And really, he was more hands-on, okay. He kind of just leaned back and said, okay, you're flying the airplane. I'm just sitting over here. And he would do that. And he'd let you fly the airplane compared to some of the other instructors that have, you know, everything by the books, you know. We're going to do everything exactly the way that I tell you. And if you do something wrong, you know, I'm going to correct you. And I feel like that can be valuable sometimes yes. in certain situations. But I also feel like it's good to kind of lean back and let the student fly the airplane and get a feel for the controls. And I think... The best way to learn is by doing, and so I agree. Thank you, Mr. McMath. We love you. Thoughts Fantastic you. man. No, but uh, that's the thing is, from that point on, I was hooked. I uh, um, he is uh, quite a bit further than um, the flight instructor that I'm currently with, so I couldn't um, fly with him. But also, his insurance on his airplane doesn't allow people to fly solo, um, so that was a big turn off for me but I really enjoyed his um, his teaching and his, his instruction method was very very beneficial so after that I uh, started flying with um, Mr. Bowker out of Ponca he is don't get me wrong he's a good teacher but he can ramble on sometimes and he's also not as you know 
just you're flying the airplane now show me this he's more like okay do this and then he'll correct you along the way that's the thing is he doesn't let you make mistakes which minor mistakes in the air are okay but if you make something a major mistake a good instructor would be able to correct it but you know sometimes it's not correctable and you know you crash but uh I got about 23.4 hours now, so I'm going strong and about to get back into it. Took my written test, um, so I'm doing pretty good. That's amazing, yeah. I currently have about 11 hours. Um, I actually uh, found my instructor through Andrew. He had uh, he had been with the current instructor, and I had been looking for one for a while, and he had recommended me to him. And uh, yeah, the first flight I ever had in an airplane was actually my first lesson in an airplane. Went up in that Cessna 150 and. All the houses turned into the tiny toy houses, and all the cars turned into tiny toy cars, and, and it was just the most amazing feeling ever. And from that moment on, I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life. And right now, it's looking like I want to go into military aviation, but you know, I'm you know I'm gonna give myself some room. Just I'm not dead set on anything right now, but uh, I definitely would like to uh, to be a military pilot. But if I don't, that's okay. Just being a pilot at all. It was uh, going to be a blessing. So, yeah. But, yeah, I think we both have a very strong passion for aviation. I think it's, uh, I agree. it's one of the best topics in the world. But, uh, so, uh, tell me about your, your, your woodcraft. So, actually, uh, I have something to, to show the real thing. Uh. Yes. Ugh. Oh, really? So, recently, I just had a birthday. And, uh, of course, my friend Andrew was here. There. And he made me this right here, which is the best birthday gift I've ever received, ever. Thank you. It is a homemade pipe. I don't know if you can see that, but it says P I M P. Just like the song from 50 Cent. I don't know what you heard about me. And you can't get it all out of me. No Cadillac, no perms, you can't see. Cause I'm a mother freaking P-I-M-P. But yeah, the the main suck thing is I actually made it of an old bullet shell. And But yeah, it's a, it's a very beautiful piece of art. And something that I'll be ever grateful for. Ever grateful for. This will definitely be a family heirloom. So, kind of take us through what got you into woodworking and uh, where's that headed right now? Well, <clears throat> honestly, I don't think I really remember exactly what got me into it. I remember, I think I just saw a video somewhere a couple years ago of a guy using a lathe to make this just beautiful piece of woodwork, and I was like, I can do that. If I can do that, I will be happy. So, for that Christmas, my father actually purchased a lathe for me not the best lathe in the world but it was something to get me going ever since then I've been perfecting my craft um, I've not been lathing or woodworking in general as much as I would have liked um, I have been branching out um, to building you know boxes it's it's you start with simple stuff I know my mother has been wanting to uh, me to make her a jewelry rack which is um, I think something that I can pursue, um, I have enough tools now to really go after it. But really, it's just something you can take a block of wood, okay, a raw block of, for example, that pipe was made out of juniper, and you can turn it into something beautiful. I made a, uh, a honey uh, dipper, you know what I'm talking about, right. the honey dipper. I made a pipe before that a couple of years ago. Um, and really I've just made, uh, I've, I've been looking about making a wine stopper. That's a common thing to make with a lathe. Right. Really a gift for my mother or father for their birthday maybe. But I think really uh, one of the positive effects of it is gifts, for example. This is the first time I've gifted somebody something that I've made but that's the thing is it puts so much more personal aspect it has such a personal connection the gift that you give in that woodworking and I think it just brings people together that's really what I you know how I got into it and what I do with it you know 
Right. And I've actually been a blacksmith for some time now. If you can go and see some of my early videos, you can see uh, uh, some of the projects that I've done. But actually, uh, was it your 15th birthday or 14th birthday that I made that axe? Mm, that's a good question. I would have to say 15th. For the first axe I ever made. Mind you, it was not a very good axe, oh. but I had figured it out. I'd figured out how to do the forge weld, which was the hardest part. And I had done, and I've made a, lots of better axes by now, and I'm actually working on making a better axe right now. But, uh, but yeah, it it was just so fulfilling. And uh, actually, our good friend Charlie made uh, the handle for it. Um, I have something to add to that little part right there. Oh yeah, yeah. Charlie didn't actually make the handle. Um, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> even though Charlie, Charlie had, didn't actually make the <laughs> handle now, <laughs> even though it was told he said that he sanded for hours, about a year after I had it, um, it was revealed to me by his brother that he was just sitting there watching as his older brother sanded that handle to perfection. Really? Did you, I thought I told you, but no, maybe you not. never told me. That. Charlie did, but the thing that Charlie did do, which is very awesome is he uh, had a wood-burning kit, and he put Norse um, ruins in the handle. And I think that's probably one of the best aspects of it. So, it actually was the Norse ruin for friendship. Which oh, really yeah, cool. friendship and a couple other things. But So the credit goes to him for part of the handle, but his brother did the other part. But yeah, I, I, have, I think I still have some burns from making that axe. It was actually... A rasp from that was actually owned by my great great grandfather, <laughs> and uh, my mother wasn't extremely pleased about that. I didn't know that at the time, and it was about that thick. It was actually way more thick than I needed, and it was like literally the only thick rasp there. And so I should have used a thinner one, but you know, I learned over time that you know you need a thinner rasp, and uh, you know I learned from it. You know, I think uh, you said heirloom. The pipe was something that you would keep in, in, as an heirloom. Of course, yes. Um, it's a beautiful piece of art. I think that that axe is, even though you say it's not your finest work, it symbolizes something more. And I think it definitely will be passed down, hopefully generations. I'm hoping that that's more of the next axe I'm going to be. Because the next axe I'm going to give you, this is something that you're going to be able to use for the rest of your given life. Well. And I'm going to let you make the handle. I, you know, actually would like to make the handle. Yeah, because I am, I will confess, I'm not the best woodworker out there. I've made a few handles on some things, but I am not a, I'm not a talented woodworker by any means. Um, I would like to say for the record, neither am I. I'm still learning, but just as he uh, claims to be not the best woodworker, um, I think he has more potential than he realizes. You know? Would you like to see some stuff that I made a few weeks ago? Sure, sure. Awesome. But me personally, I don't think I could ever blacksmith. That's the thing. Oh, anybody can blacksmith. Well, really it's the materials required. I don't really have... Um, it's a lot more expensive than woodworking. Well, actually, no. I wouldn't say it's more expensive than woodworking because the thing is we've had Oak tools dope. for a long time. That's been kind of passed down. Oh, wow. Yes. These are some projects that I finished out. So I make these... Railroad spike knives and batches of four. I'm actually going to take my robe off here because it's getting a little bit warm. Wow. That's actually... Okay, you didn't show me these. These are really cool. Yeah, those are my, my newest ones. I'm getting a lot better with the edge and making the edge. So I've kind of... My process behind it is I'm kind of like left like the material right here. It's kind of starting to rust. I'm oh. just going to knock some of the rust off. Oh, yeah. But the only part that shined is the actual edge part. Yeah. And I like the twisted handle. That's really beautiful. Right. See that? Oh, yeah. That's that's really craftsmanship right there. With oh, the yeah. stamp and everything. And actually, I don't know if you can see, but I have this pretty bad burn right here above my nipple. It was actually... So, the way that I turn these is I stick them into a vise. Then I have a pipe wrench, and I twist it like this. And so, actually... Here, I'll do a quick demonstration. Do you need me to do something? I was or? twisting it like this. And this piece of metal was super hot. And it hit me about right there on the nipple. That's... Brought the woman out of me, if you know what I mean. Screamed like a little girl. But, uh, it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool scar. But, uh, but yeah. These are some ones that I made. 
just the spike. I'm actually gonna sell these on they're beautiful eBay eventually at some point. Pretty cool. And uh, I think this is my favorite one that I made. It's a little tiny cleaver kitchen knife one. But uh, all right. And uh, we will be right back. Okay, we're back. You know, we changed the hat. We uh, uh, shedded the robes for the time being. But uh, all right. So yeah, we were just talking about these knives. This is a uh, a cleaver that I made not too long ago. You know. It's got a nice edge on it, you know, I got the thing so you can hang it somewhere, but yeah. I really enjoy blacksmithing, just uh, taking old metal, and it's a very old art, you know. It's uh, pretty much the first technological advancement that humans really ever had. Just getting metal hot and turning it into something beautiful. But yeah, this, this is what I like to do, that's my trade, that's my craft, and I really enjoy it. Yeah, and I think I have something to add to that in particular. So the thing with blacksmithing and woodworking is, you know, it takes a lot of failure. It's a lot of failure before you succeed. I think especially, I'm not a blacksmith, so I'm not really entirely sure on how it works, but with woodworking especially, when you're getting down to something that's more fine, with like, for example, that pipe, um, when I had to drill the uh, hole for the stem, um, it was very tedious, uh, and I was about to have a heart attack, really, because uh, it could split at any moment, especially with a softer wood. It's definitely more delicate, and when you put it in a lathe and you're getting it down to fine, fine material, um, the pressure of the lathe holding it there could snap it at any moment, so it's definitely kind of a, a scary sometimes. You know, but it takes a while to really become confident that even if you do fail, you can always try again. All right, and uh, I will say uh, that's, that's very knowledgeable. But I will say that blacksmithing it's a very forgiving art because if you bend the metal in the wrong way, you can always bend it back. But of course, you know there are some critical failures you can have. But the thing is, it's uh, it's like Play-Doh. You have to know how to move it just right. And I will say it took me. A few years before I could make something that I could actually call a knife. That was something that was actually in the rough shape of a knife. And I'll probably show you guys on some podcast eventually. I can't find it right now. But it's just a tiny piece of rebar that I had somehow gotten hot, hot and shaped into this piece of like jagged steel. It was a prison shank by all means. But looking <laughs> at it, you could, you could tell that it was a knife. And I was very, very, very proud of that. And I think it's important for for every man to have some craft even if he's that's not what he does for money even if he has some other business completely i think it's important for every man to have a trade a craft that he has that that he can consider to pursue because i feel like there's a a good generator of of a uh, masculinity just to be able to make something with your hands something that can be passed on for generations and i feel like it's very powerful i feel like every man should have some trade that he uh that he's learning and or has learned Regardless of the job that he does, I agree, definitely. Yeah. Any more questions for me? Okay. So, uh, I've heard word that you're considering starting a YouTube channel. Uh, when and uh, what would that look like? <sighs> yeah, Ethan. Um, and I think it's definitely beneficial. I do think it's uh, it's definitely beneficial, and. Uh, Right. So, uh, you have any questions for me? Well, how did you start your YouTube channel? Well, I actually started it about three days ago. But uh, I've recorded a crap ton of videos since then. I try to record three videos a day. And really, I have all my videos on a schedule so that they actually post, you know, on periodic days so I don't have to go in and edit them. And so. Yeah, I don't know when this video will be posted. It'll be posted sometime in the future, maybe a few weeks from now. But, uh, yeah, I definitely think that uh, there's a lot of self-improvement YouTubers out there, but there's not a lot of young self, self-improvement self coaches out there. Definitely. And I think it's good to have young self-improvement coaches out there because they can relate to uh, younger men a lot better than a 22-year-old. And so I think it's a re relativity is a very a very powerful thing. Especially when it comes to a topic like this. I agree. See, that's the thing is, you see all self-improvement videos out there of just 
you know, 30-something-year-old men, you know, and you can't really relate to that since they're starting there, or, you know, they're in their 20s, maybe. But see, that's the thing, is that we have to start it so much earlier in today's generation because we're just so corrupted by different things. Um, so it's definitely, it's definitely harder. But if you just maintain discipline, you can definitely do it. Exactly. That's very good. Yes. So, um... Would you like to talk about, uh... <laughs> I want to talk about women. What, what do we want to talk about now? Women. Women? Oh, women. Of course, this is a huge topic. We could go on for hours. This is a very huge topic. And, uh, okay, so imagine we're talking to 11, 12 year old us. Okay, let's look at it. 11, 12 year old us. I would slap the crap out of my 11 year old self. They can't pull any women because no. we're freaking losers. I what would we say to them? So. Where does attraction to women start? Well, I would say number one is people will tell you this isn't the case, but the number one key to attraction is physical appearance. That's, of course, the number mm -hmm. one, because regardless of what kind of person you are on the inside, people are going to judge you by your outside appearance. And so start now. Start going to the gym. Do compound exercises. Start now and build your body up. So within one to two years, you can have a beautiful body that you're proud of. I have something to add to that, too. Even though people may say, it's not what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside. That's a load of horse crap. Okay, no one actually believes that. They only say that to make other people feel better. And it's just a sensitive snowflake thing. Okay? Your body does matter. Going to the gym does matter. And if you don't have access to a gym right now, do some push-ups. Do some sit-ups. Go for a run. There's okay. all kinds of home exercises you can do. Definitely. Nobody, no person on this planet has an excuse to not do some kind of workout. That's the thing. Is that, I mean, even if you're slightly disabled. Okay, God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's allow you. Allow you. <laughs> You're slightly disabled. Even if you're slightly disabled, <laughs> listen. If you don't have the use of your legs, okay, you can still work out those biceps. You can still work out that chest. That's okay? right. Um, now that's not really uh, maybe doesn't pertain to you. you. You guys have a different battle going. But if you're just emotionally like, I don't really feel like going to the gym today. Shut up, okay. Stop get, being a beta. Get over it. Okay? Do work. Go to Sweat. The gym. Have pain. Okay, dude. And, and also, not just the gym, but with actual, act, like, um, in school. Okay, you've got an assignment due. Okay, what are you going to do? Wait till the last day? That's what most of us do. No, you're going to get that done as soon as you hear about it. And you're going to turn it in, and you're going to feel great afterwards. That's the thing. You go through challenging. The more hardships that you go through, the more challenges that you endure, the harder you become. Okay? And the easier life is. See, hard choices in the beginning lead to an easy life afterwards. But if you go easy choices in the beginning, it leads to a hard life afterwards. Very factual. This is true. And uh, on that subject of, uh, what did you say? Uh, I think we were talking about women, but I think it kind of got off subject. Oh, right, okay. Uh, so, kind of still on that topic. So, okay. Of course, I like to say confidence is the number one key to attraction. Really... It's your physical body, but another, you know, quick thing that you can do, and you can even fake this sometimes, but it's good to build an actual sense of confidence. Confidence is, it's really the second key, but it's really the key to attraction. <laughs> it's kind of okay. the first or second key to it's attraction. It's like up there. It's, it's tied it's with up physical there. It's appearance. definitely in the top five, but, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> texting women. Definitely. Um, uh. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Texting women. <laughs> text men. Text. Text your mom. Tell her that you love her. Tell. Praise your woman. Praise your woman. Start by praising your mother. Because if you can't praise your mother, you can't praise your woman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the key to success. I'm telling you. If you just start by, okay, listen. It's one thing if you're trying to set up a date, but don't be like, "What are you doing? What's your favorite color?" 
that is the most conversation killer of all time, Don't and we've all ask used it. This simple question, because every other guy is asking the simple question. You want to ask her the questions that make her think, the questions that make her giggle, the questions that make her think, "Wow, this guy is a little bit crazy." Yeah, exactly. See, that's the thing, is that you can't be out here asking these simple questions that are just really, and we've all done them. Me and you, I think, agree that we at some point we've all, both have. We we've done it with many women. What's your favorite color? You know what's what your kind favorite of, color? What kind of music do you listen to? Do you have pets? I mean, come on. Do you have pets? Come on. Listen, but see, one thing I found that does work a little bit is um, if you ask a boring question like that, put afterwards something like for the sake of conversation, but you know, be it in a comical manner. But definitely don't just ask what's your favorite color and expect an answer and the conversation to go smoothly after that because it won't. It'll be choppy. It'll be messy. It'll be quick and she'll get bored and she'll exactly. move on. Exactly. She'll, she'll go on to that, you know, that other guy wherever he is, you know. <laughs> and on confidence, like, uh, you know, if you're a running woman, don't, don't talk with your with your, with your chest closed like this. In the book of the superior man... David Data talks about yeah, the, in, the inferior be... man. Well, most men, they sit like this. Okay. Imagine if you saw me in public like this. Okay. What do you think about me right now? I'm I think you like look kind of like a meth head, but okay. on, a, on a different note, okay. I would say that you have bad posture. Okay. What about, okay. Also, I look like a beta. You I do look, look like a beta. I look like I don't really know what I'm doing with like, my life, and I'm afraid of every man that's around it me, looks and I don't like, want to attract women. It looks like I could go up to you right now. I could slap you in the face and spit in your <laughs> in your face, <laughs> and you wouldn't do anything. You wouldn't do anything. You'd be like, "I'm gonna call my dad," or "Do you know who my dad is?" or "I'm gonna call the police." You know? No. No, you want to be strong. You want to okay, have what? A, what? What about raise this? your chest? If I came to you up to you right now, well, I wish I wouldn't. I would be very afraid. I would be afraid that you would definitely retaliate, because that's 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 the thing. You have to be afraid of retaliation. It, it's, imagine yourself, and then imagine yourself coming up to yourself, and you're like this, and you're like, uh, "Stop it, okay? Stop it! Come on, I'm gonna text my girl. How are you doing today, sweetie? W I D. What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. G N. Mm. Text me back. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. Betas do that. Betas do that. If I came up to you doing that, I could slap you in the face, okay, and you wouldn't do anything. And also, another thing is, don't text her back immediately. I feel like a lot of people say this, but uh, I feel like this can be faked a lot, you know. You know, you text a girl, then you see it, and you're like, oh, I'm going to wait three minutes and not text her back, because you're not supposed to wait. If you have a genuine purpose, and you're actually busy doing productive things with your life, you won't have time to text your girl all the exactly. time. If you actually are filled with purpose and actually have things going for you, you won't be able to text your girl 24-7. Mm -hmm. And so it comes natural. And also, you know, when you're talking to the girl, like this, you know, don't talk to your girl like this. You know, ask open-ended questions. You know, a book that I would always recommend to read is The Book of the Superior Man by David Data. It's, actually, it's genuinely the key book in uh, understanding feminine energy. And I'd recommend all of you to read it. Yeah, this book right here, The Holy Grail. Uh, I just got done reading it this morning, actually. And, uh, actually, absolutely 10 out of 10 book. Would recommend. Definitely. <clears throat> but, um, that's the thing. Okay. It's, it's texting and conversation killers that make or break the relationship. It really is. Or maybe not, it's, maybe it's not a relationship. Maybe you're just texting a friend who is a woman. Okay. If you're going for that friend zone kind of thing, which, why would you be? Women are there for a reason, okay? Don't be friends with women. Okay, well, actually, I, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that, but any, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> no, but the thing is, like, when you're pursuing a woman, you got to maintain mystery. Mystery? Mystery. That's another yeah, thing. Yeah, we got, that's a whole topic in itself. Mystery is very good. So, okay, imagine this. Your girl asks you what you're doing. The number one worst thing you could say to your girl when she asks you what you're doing is what you're doing. She doesn't always want you to do what she says she wants you to do. Exactly. 
And this is factual. Also, another thing to add to that. <clears throat> if your girl asks you what you're doing, and she does want a response of what you're doing, if you say nothing much, you're a beta. You are a beta. Get out of here. That doesn't work. That's stupid. Okay, that's stupid. That's she's that's any, dumb. any attraction that was ever possible between you and her is dead yes. at that point. Like you've already, you might as well just move on. Exactly. And uh, and so, really, so the feminine mind is it's it's crazy. It's it's like an ocean. I like to think of feminine energy like an ocean. It's fluent. It's unpredictable. It goes everywhere, and it's it's most of all unpredictable. And it could just, it could just, it could split and uh, like Noah's could, Ark. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, 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 like to uh, whoever did that. Anyways. And so one thing, like, if I'm feeling bored and I want to text my girl, I would don't say W Y D or S U P. What's up? Like a freaking retard. You sound like a frat boy. Don't do that. I'll say something totally random that will totally make her like, you know, like, you know, girl out and go, I'll be like, I bet you're really biting the donkey right now. Cletus, would you please get out of the trash? Chanel, Number stop five. panicking. Even if her name isn't Chanel. Why did David jump off the Empire State Building? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> because he wanted to. And he wanted to see what would happen when he hit the ground. Michael, stop gouging yourself with the pike. Trout don't like to be bothered. <laughs> 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 no. Trout... <laughs> They like to be wined and dined. <laughs> okay. In a very particular... Okay, l- let's get but on... the point on t- is... Okay. <laughs> they don't know what you mean. Yes. And, uh, of course, for that, they're gonna be like, Oh, well, what do you mean by that? What do you think? And you're like... It'd be just be like... It'd be like... Oh, you don't, you don't know what I'm talking about? Just just play around with it. That starts... Because she'll laugh and she'll be, she'll be like, Wait, what do you mean? And you can just go from there. Just be funny and mysterious and like... And then also like, uh... You know, disappear sometimes. Exactly. You know, like, you don't like, uh, so maybe, you know, like, tell your girl that, like, okay, you're doing something after this. Okay, you're on a date with a girl, but you have to be gone at, you know, you have to leave at 4 p.m. Exactly. Sharp. Don't Four, tell her what you're doing. 3.58 comes around, and he's like, all right, it was good seeing you, but, you know, uh, he's, he's packing up his stuff, he's putting stuff in his bags. It's really great seeing you. I'm looking forward to the next day, but I gotta go because you know I gotta go conquer the world. I have big important things to do. I have. But ima- imagine if your girl and your man said this. Hold on, I'll be the girl. Okay. All right, Chanel. <laughs> yeah. It was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Chanel. It was really good seeing you. But uh, I gotta go conquer the world. I have big, amazing, important things to do. I'm going to the top, and I'm bringing you with me. But I have to go for now. And then he leaves. He doesn't say bye. Puts his glasses on and walks outside. She doesn't know where he's going. What's going through your mind right now as a feminine woman? I'm severely attracted to you right now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go on a second date, and I also want to raise a family with you. Exactly. Okay. This is how women think. Women are naming your child. If let's say that was the first date, that girl is going to be naming your children by the time she gets home. Yes, because this is how women think. And so, uh, don't constantly tell your woman what you're doing all the time, especially if it's, especially if she says what you're doing and you say something like playing video games or TV. Mm-mm. You. Okay, maybe you can tell her if you're actually doing something productive, like getting out of the gym. Like a lot of times, like and don't lie. Don't be like, don't be like a snake and be like, oh yeah, I'm in the gym because that's just gonna, that's not good for you or her. Be genuine. Be genuine. Freaking beta. That's the thing is that when you're literally watching TV and she asks what you're doing, 
instead of saying watching TV, say learning new things. Empowering See? the mind. Empowering the mind. Empowering this, the mind. This is this is like cocaine to the female brain. Yes. She wants to know what you're doing. She's fascinated. Absolutely fascinated. What is he talking about? Learning new things? Empowering the mind? Empowering what does that even mean? What does that even mean? Oh my gosh! Jeez! She's gonna flip out. And she's gonna be very confused. And you want women to be confused. Because when they're confused... They get, they're, they're texting you and you're like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What are you talking about? What do you mean empowering the If mind? she's confused, she's thinking about you. And if she's thinking about you, you're winning. Exactly. And then after you tell her empowering the mind, and she responds, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't even respond. Well, actually, here's the thing. There's a very fine balance between responding and not responding. Because if you respond right away, um, do something even more mysterious. Like, if she asked, what does that even mean? And it, you, you're like, ah, man, what's a, what's a good what's a good response to that? You know, it doesn't you, wait. But if she says, "What do you even mean?" You don't need to know anymore. Or oh, or, yes. Or, or or something like. Or or okay, praise their woman at all times. They'd be like, or be like, I lo- I love the way you think. Or you're very cute when you're when you're uh, fascinated. Or some, just plan her, plan her emotions, and it's gonna differ from girl to girl. Cause another thing, you want to study her, and you want to figure out what 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 makes her brain go, what makes her think, what really gets her emotions going. And another important thing is to make her experience all the emotions. Yes. You don't want to be the guy that's just like Mr. Nice Guy all the time. You know, like run up on your girl sometimes, scare her, like make her feel those crazy emotions. You know, make her feel like uh, you know, like a like jump her, scare her, pick her up, you know, scream, like make her feel all the emotions. Maybe even sometimes, you know, tease her, you know, make her a little bit angry. That's okay as long as you're being playful and you're not genuinely being rude. Of course, you want to keep it for the most part on the positive side, but you want to make her feel all the emotions around the whole circle. Because if you make her feel all the emotions, she'll think about you more. And if she's thinking about you, you're winning. You're winning. That's the thing. And when she does tell you or ask you, what does that even mean? You better say, I'll tell you for coffee in the morning. Or, I'll tell you later. Yeah, I'll tell you later, you know, when I see you. That's a good one. See, because you want to you wanna transition that into a planning something in person. Because here's the thing. What I found with my extensive experience with long-distance online relationships. They don't work. Rest in peace. Eight months of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the thing is... and. One thousand dollars, and well, actually, I think it's more like five hundred, six hundred. But anyway, that's Still this is not money. the point. The, it's not the point. It's a lot of money, a lot of wasted time. Anyways, but I did learn a lot from that to tell you, so you don't have to. The thing I learned, okay, was that texting and FaceTiming until four a.m. every night. It's fun. It's fun, sure. In the short term, you learn too much about the other person than is comfortable. Okay, you want to maintain... That's not maintaining mysteriousness at all. Okay? You're depolarizing the relationship. Exactly, exactly. As I've mentioned in a previous video. Now, while it might get her nerves up, more interested... Here's the thing. While it might work for the short term, that long term is not going to work out. That's why it only lasted eight months. Okay? That's why it lasts for a short period of time, and then you're done. And then you're burnt out. Because you've, you know everything about this woman. And nothing's new. And you now, want there to be mystery, exactly. even between you and her. Even for her, you want to, you want there to be some mystery about her, because there's always supposed to be mystery with femininity, because it's unpredictable. And you have to admit, as a guy, a girl who's unpredictable and just radiant, and like, she's like mad. One, you have to admit, sometime you see your girl mad over something that's totally weird. You have to admit that turns you on to some extent. Oh yeah. Sometimes. I'm turned on right now. By that. Just, just the thought of it, okay? <laughs> okay, but th- that's the thing. Okay. That's the thing. Okay. You want... It's just so hard for people to understand that you can't do those one-liners or something like that. Yeah. You, you can't... Oh, and also, before, like, the, I have something to add to the long-distance relationship. I, I also was in a long-distance relationship, and I learned something about that. 
it's cool because you're texting all day. You're 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 there's so much dopamine involved when you get this message. Oh, she texted me back. Oh, what'd she say? Oh, she's calling me. First time. Heart emoji. Hearts. Ah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the thing is, okay, in my situation, this girl, she was crazy about me. Totally in love with me. Andrew can vouch for me. As was his girlfriend. But the thing is, a lot of that going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can cut that out. Pimp. Pimp. Pimp energy. That's what we're talking about, okay? But... There was another man that went to her school. He wasn't by far a high quality man. He he wasn't by any means to my scale, but he was flesh and he was close. I did not get to see her very often, but she saw him every day. And I knew she was an undisciplined girl. And this is a losing battle. When there's another man that has his eyes on your woman and you don't get to see her very often and he does, that is a losing battle, King. Losing. Don't be the one to lose that battle. You, I know it sounds harsh, but you end it first yes. before you find out that she's been hanging around. And here's the thing. Don't be that guy. Another thing about that is that that's really doing you a service and doing her a service. Because In the though, long term. In the long term. That's the thing. In, in terms of short term, in terms of that week or even that month, maybe even the year if she's that obsessed. She'll be very upset. And you might be very, too. Very, very, very upset. upset. Now, um, like screaming mad. Yes. Like, uh. <laughs> very, uh, very upset. Very upset. Yes. See, like for him, his situation. End it. She's gonna find that guy. Even She's gonna is, be with that guy. Even if you're leaps and bounds better than he is. The fact that she sees him every day and she sees you every four months is all it takes for a low-quality woman to switch on you. Yes. That's Don't get me thing. wrong. She'll still want you mm -hmm. over the phone, but... Yeah. Ho's gone ho. Bro's gonna bro. See, for my situation, <laughs> for my situation, okay. Your situation is an interesting situation. It was, it was different. See, the thing with mine was not necessarily that there was another man, because there most definitely was not. <laughs> 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 uh, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but listen, the thing was, okay, was that she was getting obsessed very was, very obsessed see the thing is her whole personality was turning into me she was just wanted to she wanted to just become with me you know what I'm saying not in that sense but you know what I'm saying so here's the thing is that uh, I got burnt out very quickly and I was done I was done about a month before I ended it and that's the thing is that I spent a whole month wishing that I had made different decisions in the past and it was wasted time. So, um, a very controversial thing that I did. I broke up with her, and I don't condone this. I would not recommend it. In fact, don't do this. Don't do what I did. That's a learning experience. I broke up with her over text after I agreed that I would go to homecoming with her. <laughs> which is awful. Classic, classic. Classic, classic. classic, classic See, that's, bro. What, that's what the douchey man would do. Okay, that's what the low quality man would say. Classic. Do it to all the women. <laughs> now, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is even the method was bad, but the timing was good. Okay. Maybe not the best, but it was okay. Because that's the thing. She needed to break away from the mothership. You know what I'm saying? It's because I had become this beacon for her. Because she had... There was... I was... <laughs> I was the first man she had been with. And I was very loving and I was very physical. Okay. It was very, very physical. And so... By the end of it, she had learned a lot. I had learned a lot. And she still wanted to be friends afterwards, which wasn't going to work. 
So, <laughs> classic, I, classic, I got classic, classic, classic. <laughs> so, which that never works, but I had to do something that hurt me. Ghosted her and didn't look back, and it's really benefited. I, I think I, I, I'm feeling great right now. That's a hard thing to do, brother. It's almost been a year ago. And that's the thing. Those learning experiences, they will stay with you. I'm going to be 50 telling that to my kids. Okay. Well, I am hope I'm a, my dad's old, okay? Um, the thing is, I'm going to be 35 telling that to my teenage son. No. <laughs> I'm going to be 45. How about that? Telling that to my teenage son. And it's going to be very beneficial information for him because he's going to be going through the exact same thing. Because these online relationships nowadays, your parents can't teach you that. You have to learn it yourself. It's disappointing. Some good stuff. I have a question for you. So, of course, we know that uh, a man's core is going to be following his purpose. Yes. You know, fulfilling the job, getting the job done, slaying the lion, securing the package. That's what drives a man. His core existence is to chase his purpose. Yes. But we also know that the women's core existence is to spread love and intim intimacy in their life. And uh, a healthy uh, feminine woman will be her core uh, her core pr purpose in life will be uh, to spread love and intimacy in their life. So when does uh, when does it become too much? When when does of course you know for yes. most I, for most men the idea of a woman the, your woman being totally obsessive with you would be a, a very attractive idea. But when does it become too much? How how could such an amazing fantasizing idea become too much? For you to bear. I agree. How? So, that's a very interesting question. It's it's going to be tackled from multiple different angles. Okay. okay. But let's just go on head on. Okay. So, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. When you mean too much, do you mean there's too much love and affection going on in the short term where you're staying home too much? Or do you mean that you're out, you're doing your thing, you're gone, and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and then you come home and there's too much? No, well, so like, in your situation, when you say she became too obsessive, when she mm. cared about you too much, when did that become a deal breaker? When did that become, how did that become a negative thing? Well, there were other factors that contributed to my ending of the relationship. Right. Um, but in terms of her... It was the um, obsessiveness? It was the obsessiveness. Unhealthy obsessiveness. And the long distance was very hard for me because I was unable to drive at the time. And she had gotten um, a little bit mad that I was unable to hang out with her one weekend. And it was at that point when I was that, like... I, I, I can see how that could be very annoying. I, I was annoyed and I was done. That kind of obsessiveness. Exactly. And I, that was one of my points when I texted her, um, the breakup text, of course. Very bad, don't do it. Okay, I know. But that was one of my points, and that was a very good point. Another thing is not related to her. Look at the family she's in before you go in for the kill. Very important. This is almost more important Deal breaker. than the woman herself. <clears throat> okay, because her father uh, was a chaplain in the army. Okay. He was actually a good guy. Okay. He was a little strange, I have to say. He was a good guy, though. I really I enjoyed his company on occasions. Okay. But he started to say to her, you know, we need to have him out so he can court you in the house with the whole family. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Stay away from that. And she couldn't even hang out with me by herself. Keep in mind, she's now 18, but she was 17 and a half at the time. Or, well, 17. Give, take a few. Anyways, so, she would bring her whole extended family, okay, I, that's an exaggeration, but like, three of her brothers and sisters would have to come out and meet up. And... I can tell you and this. I, I remember, too, there, we were at, he was at, I, I went to a rodeo with him once, and she had to bring her brother and, and her sister. sister. That was very interesting. It was awkward, and I did not like it. <laughs> and another thing. I thought it was funny. It, 
It was funny. And actually, that was a good night, though. Besides that, because she kind of just decided... It's also she... the night I, that I met a very interesting woman named Kinley... Kinley Cookerly. Sorry, I just stole that. But... <laughs> <laughs> interesting no. woman. I learned a lot from her, too. Yes. But the point is, look at the family. Decide what you want from that. And here's the thing. Here's... It's so important to look at the family. I cannot stress that enough. Okay? Especially if you're our age and she still lives with her family. And she was very religious. Um, religious is not... Religious in, religious and, in itself is a good thing. Yes. But you it, want a woman that matches your religion. You want a woman that shares your faith. That's the thing. It, 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 that's good. But it, it was... It was in a different context, the the amount of religiousness. And I love a God-fearing woman. Radical Baptist, you could say. Not even Radical Baptist. It was one of the non-denominational people, which not all of them, I'm not, listen, I love you guys. But there's a certain church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that is, <laughs> <laughs> that I will say is not my favorite, and it's full of private school prissy little posh kids that are like you're below me I hate you and don't go for those women don't go for those women they're low quality women and they you they don't deserve they don't deserve you exactly but the thing is that's the type that I don't like there's some denominational perjury that I'm really into you know I really like and and there's people that go there that are really nice but the thing is okay it was too much. She was like, oh, yeah, I spoke in tongues like 16 times today. That doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> that just doesn't happen. Yeah, okay, it's it not in the Bible, okay? And it's not how it works. And it was an issue for me, especially when I started learning more about it. And I became more knowledgeable of the subject. And I just, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I remember that. That was interesting. But I do feel like you you got a lot of positive experience out of that relationship. Yes, I got a lot of positive experience. Definitely a lot of positive experience. Very positive. But um, there were a few negative aspects. But that's the thing I learned from those, so I consider them positive. Overall, it was pretty positive because I learned a lot, and uh, I had some good times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. There, there was one good time that wasn't so good, but where I said a little something. So yeah, we're gonna. Okay, so if you're watching now, then we just cut out a chunk, and you don't get to know what it was. You don't get to know, because <laughs> it's gone now. All, All we right. will say it was <laughs> devious. <laughs> <laughs> then you don't get to see it. <laughs> yeah, sucker. But uh, yeah, I think you learned a lot from that relationship. Yes, I think it was very beneficial. Yeah, actually, uh. We, he actually met her at the Winter Ball. That we, Me and uh, our other best friend, we go to a Winter Ball every year. And we actually saw her after the breakup at the last a few months ago, the last Winter Ball. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> that yeah, was awkward. That was very interesting. But you also met another girl that I think you got some. But you didn't, you didn't end up dating her, but you did. Uh, well, actually, I had met her. I had actually got a number first. Yes, but then we, yes. then we stopped talking, and then you guys started talking. I think you got some positive energy out of that. You guys never dated, but... I think you got some. Uh, yes. You went on a few dates. We are not going to name this woman. But the thing is. Let's not name any more the woman. We, I said, well, I, we I, never I, named a woman, I don't think. Did we? <laughs> um, <laughs> we get, we're going to cut that part out. Okay, yeah. so. Um, that, if you're watching this, then it's already cut it's out. It's already so cut out. So you, you, don't, you don't get to know. That's private information. Actually, let's cut out all the names that we've said. Because, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways. Um. I saw this particular woman at this dance, the most recent one. Her name shall remain anonymous. And, well, actually, originally you started talking to her. Okay. But she was a good time and woman. She's a nice lady. A nice lady. I will lady. say that, but she's not... I hung out with her a couple times. And I even good took her to, woman. I took her to prom, but as a friend, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, beta move. But the thing was... I said it was for friends, but then I I was going to, you know, finesse it. And it was going to work, but then I decided no. Because my man here told me something that I would never forget. She kind of reminds me of a mom 
And then from that point forward, I was done because I couldn't I couldn't shake the thought. Because she, she reminds me of a mom. Yeah, that was that was a sad day. But now you know you have the current woman that you have your eyes on, which is a very amazing woman, might I say? Yes. Very, and she can rock short hair. Not a lot of women can pull off short hair. No. But this one can. Especially not a lot of blondes. Yeah. And she's funny. She actually she's actually enjoyable to talk. She's, she's really very funny. And she's she talks to you like like the tough. like the guys. Imagine beautiful, charismatic young woman that talks to you like you're like like another just like another bro. Yes. She's very cool. It's not but the thing is she still has that feminine aspect. You know what I'm saying? She does. She has that feminine core. He actually just played me this song on Snapchat. She sent him a song of her playing on the guitar. Sweetest thing ever. Like imagine if you had a like a woman that was like cool, funny and you know, funny but at night she sent you videos of her playing guitar and singing like that is like a woman that is in touch with her feminine core that is what every man desires yes and I have to say that I mm -hmm. had never thought that that was something that I would enjoy but I have to say that I'm changed from it I would say that that is just beautiful a woman that is a musical artistic person will be more beneficial to you than than other women it's gonna itch when it dries. <laughs> it's gonna itch when it dries, like I always say. Oh. Oh, we man. might cut that part out. You don't get to know. <laughs> you don't get to know what just happened. Uh. <laughs> man. So, uh, yeah, man, we've had a lot of great adventures together. But Let's talk about your. What about uh, what about your experience? Because you have quite a the one different I'm, at the view. one that I'm very currently mm -hmm. chasing. That one. Uh, well, no, the the past one. Okay. But past one. Yeah, you don't have to go into great detail, of course, okay. <laughs> because that would be Andrew. Not I'm, for children. I'd like you to give <laughs> some input on there because you were you were there. You know, you called me out on it. You know, before it ever started. You know, and so I'd like you to. I'd like you to know, butt in when you can and just give your perspective of like what my attitude was yes. at the time and just what you think. And so, what before we go any further, actually, I would. That's a good. That's a good point of view. I would like to hear what you thought about my experience. So I will be totally honest. I thought that it was very cool. From what I had seen, I had actually met her a few times in public. We actually all went out and ate once at a nice restaurant and so that was really cool mm -hmm. and uh but yeah she was a uh, she was nice <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't necessary she was she had looks of a sort of a sort <laughs> <laughs> But she she honestly wasn't even that bad. She was she was she was a pretty okay looking gal. But she was also very nice. I think that like her like she ha had very feminine energy in person. Definitely, definitely some very feminine. But uh, you know, as you can see, that went too much. But she she was very feminine, and she uh, I think she complimented him very well, and uh, she was very nice. I will say that she mm -hmm. is a uh, definitely a very very nice young lady, and she'll be a great mom someday. That's the thing. Yes. So, that's very important input. Um, anyways, um, you can continue with your, your woman. It all started many years ago, actually. She's actually one of my father's friend's daughters. She was at this house, actually, just about a mile down the road at our barn. And I saw her, we were actually, we were having hanging out. And then we came back to the house. And mind you, this is when I was probably about nine years old. I actually taught her how to play Fortnite. This was many years ago, actually. Then uh, I had saw her actually a few months before I actually started talking to her because we went and ate at a Mexican restaurant. Our two families. Mind you, she was very uh, uh, non-social at the time. Uh, on her phone constantly, you know. But I did notice she was a very good-looking woman. Very, very good. Fiery redhead. Very, very attractive. 
But um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. And then a few months later, she, uh, I had met her at my other house I was at because it was my father's birthday, and uh, I was talking to her, and I was talking to her parents, uh, and I was talking to her father because I, I like her father. He actually like makes pickles for us sometimes, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, I was talking to him. And I was like, uh, he was like, hey, uh, my daughter Bailey doesn't think uh, you remember her. You should go say hi to her. And I was like, okay. And I was sitting down by the fireplace, and you know, I talked to her. I was like, hey, and she was drawing something on her Apple iPad. And I was like, hey, uh, is that anime? Are you making anime? Because it looked like she was drawing an anime girl. And she literally, like, she, like, looked at me like this. Like, okay, Andrew, I'm back. say that to me. Uh, are you drawing anime? No. <laughs> That's what it was like, and so that was a total turn off. I was like, oh, okay, I, I just said hi to this woman, and like she was just totally like, that was dumb. But anyways, uh, I had actually, but then actually a few minutes later, I was at the uh, at the table eating some chili, you know, with a magical man, sitting straight up, being a G, and she came up to me and she had that pop up. She was like, uh, you're you're the only one here I'm brave enough to talk to. I was like, oh yeah, well uh, yeah, I remember you're you're Bailey, right? She's like, yeah. We started talking, and then we she started talking about how she watched anime. So we started watching it on my iPad. Eventually, we went to my room and watched it, and that was cool. <laughs> yeah, we actually just had it like propped up on my desk, like nothing happened. Like she literally like so she was like sitting down in my bed. I was actually laying down my sleeping bag, and then she was like, uh, she was like, oh, you can lay down on your bed, like you don't have to sit on there. And I was like. <laughs> okay don't and so I, just, I just don't mind if I do you know and so I literally I sat down on my bed it was literally the most awkward like 20 minutes of my life I'm not even gonna lie so I just kind of sat there kind of like this you know keep my distance on the other end of the bed and she just sat there on her phone watching and then eventually she was like uh, you wanna go like go outside or something and I was like sure let's go outside so we go outside and this uh, house was actually like in the middle of the woods it's kind of like a shack actually and so there's lots of woods in the back we walked to the back with some flashlights, and I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, I come here a lot when I'm hunting and stuff, and just kind of hanging out. We were in this clearing of the woods, and she was like, oh, that's cool. Uh, and she, like, here, I'll get like this. Oh, yeah. You do, do the, the demonstration. She, she, yeah. she, so, like, she, I'm... She's, she's very like, short. Compa- wait, wait. Uh, well, okay, she would her be head, further down. Her head like, is probably about right here yeah, on me. Okay. Because, mind you, I'm 6'6". I'm six, six. I was probably about 6'5 at the time. 6'4, six, 6'5 six, at the time. Yeah, I think at the time you were 6'4. I remember you saying yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, she's right here. And, uh, and she just, she got up next to me. She just had her shoulder mount on. I was like, and, but thinking, like, facial, do the facial expression of this is super sick. Like, whoa. Is it? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> That's the face I made. Cause that was really cool. <laughs> Leg day. Oh, <laughs> I'm brother. I'm sorry. Man's hit leg day, and I just used his leg to push myself up. <sighs> okay. Anyways. So. Anyways. Yeah. After that, we started talking. I got a number. She started talking to me. You know, I found out that she had liked me. You know, and that was cool. And uh, you know, long story short. Uh, we weren't dating, but we both liked each other, and so that was pretty sick. But, uh, okay. It's a very, very long story, and I don't want to tell it all. Just but, cut uh, to the, the, how it ended kind of thing. Okay. I will say, though, I'm, uh, hold on. Oh, wait, uh, give your input. So, like, b- between, uh, that day and, uh, you know, before, like, I totally ended it. Kind of give your input of what you thought about the whole thing. I'm going to pull up something real quick. Well, um, I don't know if you want me saying this particular part, so we can cut it out if you want to. But just, I remember... Just kind of give genuine input without, like, giving out too much, like, information. In part- okay, I, I'm not going to give out any information, but I will say there was... An shall we say an age, age gap? gap. <laughs> <laughs> and... But um, it's... It Okay, I'll, I'll just be real. The age gap was like it's that it's a two year age gap. Yes, younger. Um, she was younger. Very attractive. 
but she, to be fair, she did not look. She did not look. She her did age. not look her age. She looked very old. She could have passed for like a sixteen-year-old, maybe. But anyways, mm. we did not let down this man. Uh, we were very persistent with our mocking um, of the age gap, and I will say that we were. We were pretty ruthless at times, and I, I will apologize for some of it. <laughs> you were pretty ruthless <laughs> but, at times. But I think that being said, I think it was good. Because uh, you were approaching a dangerous intersection where things could have gone south. Luckily, they didn't, and you ended it before that happened. Mm-hmm. But I would say that your overall attitude and everything did not change during that particular time. See, because sometimes women change you. The only thing I will say is you would be like, oh. One thing, regardless of any, both of us and both of our relationships, the boys stay number one. Exactly. Until you're married, until you're mm. married and you have children. I, uh, I don't really have kids. Boys stay number one. Always number Always. one. Maybe until you have kids and Maybe stuff. when you have kids and you're married, then like you're like, Number number two, kind of like a never less than number two. Marriage is kind of a religiously binding contract, yeah. so maybe until you're married, boys stay number one, regardless of the situation. Regardless, okay, and even while you're married, you will try everything in your power to make them number one. But of course, that doesn't always happen. I w- so I will say before I ended it, September twenty fourth, twenty twenty two, was a very amazing day. I remember this day very vividly. I don't. I remember it clear as day. I will say that as a continuance of just a little finishing up of what I was going to say, and then we can get into this, of course. Um, I would say that his attitude towards the boys did not change at all. The boys came number one, and I'm proud of him for that. The only thing that changed a little bit would be like, oh, dude, she's never made, I mean, another woman has never made me feel this way in my whole life. I feel fulfilled. Especially with a beta move. Woman can't fulfill you. Purpose can. True. A woman is nice sometimes. We all have to agree that. A woman's touch is God's gift to man. This is very true. A woman's touch is absolutely God's gift for men. Oh, I'll say this. A feminine woman's touch, a woman that is in touch with her feminine core, is a ma- is a is the gift for the masculine man from God. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, uh, as an addition to this, or just on to what we were talking about, um, I would say that there was not an either which way of your attitude or demeanor or anything. Um, so in all, I think you learned valuable lessons, um, and I think that you ended it at a great time because it would have gone terribly. So anyways, on to the, <laughs> on to the infamous day, September, what was it, 24th, 24th, September 24th, exactly. 2022. A day that will live in infamy in a different manner. Tell us about this day in minimal detail, please. Minimal detail? Yes. Well. Or as much detail as you want to put out there. Well, I will say this. The touch of the feminine woman is absolutely life-changing. If you've yes. never held a woman's hand before, and the first woman's hand you hold is a feminine, affectionate woman, she looks at you in the eye with this look that I can't even begin to even try to describe to you. Your whole perception of women will change. Is that right, Andrew? 
I agree. You'll be chasing that feeling forever. Forever. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And that day, I learned a very important lesson. Pound some wisdom on us. What did you learn? I learned. Women go crazy for a little bit of Ethan Lowe. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 Man. Yeah. Okay. So the next day it was over. And, uh... (laughs) <laughs> the next day and you tell it. the fact that I couldn't have that feeling of being with her anymore was so painful the fact that I couldn't spend physical time with her was so painful that I had to cut it off because I couldn't deal with the distance anymore that's how powerful it was see Just yes. Yes. That's beautiful. Now, when it comes to women, um, in terms of, okay, we can't post this now, but just cut that. We're 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 gonna we're gonna cut the yeah. Okay. We (laughs) if you're watching this, we just cut out a a lot. lot. You, you don't, don't know. Get to, you don't what? get to know. <laughs> you don't, <laughs> don't get to know. No. Wait, hold on. Let's let's. Okay, if okay. you're watching this, we just cut out a huge part, and well, it's actually not even that big of a part. Okay, a, it it was really kind of. It was a, I don't even know why we went. A particular individual would know. We were talking about a a particular individual. Anyway, so let, let's let's just change the subject. Let's change the subject. So, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So we've talked about women. We've talked about kind of what we have going on in our lives right now. Yeah, just a little this, please. Uh. I'm comfortable, man. What you gotta do? My booty's falling asleep. Uh, mine too, not gonna lie. <coughs> Holy crap, bro, we've been recording for an hour. That's in not just even... A, in just a second session. Because remember, we have the other video too. We do. Wow. Wow. This went by so quick. Dude, this is enjoyable. I've had fun. Do we, ha- do we have anything else we want to discuss or do we want to watch them? Uh, do you have anything else? You know, of course, I'd, I'd like to do this, you know, when you come over, mm-hmm. you know, most times they would come over, we just keep doing them. Exactly. So we'll have good conversations. We might get a better setup going. Yeah. I think. And also, I could probably bring up my setup and we could also do it at your house. I think my house might be a better location, I but do you have better so equipment. Right, I know, but I can bring my equipment to your house. Exactly. Yeah. I think we would have a nice bar in the background. That would be very cool. You know, yeah. no distractions. Okay. We could really focus on the topic. Yeah. So that's something to look forward to. Okay, I think we've had a very, very good and interesting conversation Definitely. thus far. I think we've covered a lot of amazing topics, and I really hope that you can really uh, digest uh, these conversations for what it is and not turn it into something it's not. And so uh, thank you guys for listening. My brother. My brother in Christ here. Brother. And uh, love you, dog. It was good seeing you, and uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, we're on your side.